welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I, on the other hand, am very, very stressed today. I say that because it's been four weeks since I've had my surgery, and this weekend I felt so good. Not pain-free, but I felt so good that I thought, well, I'm gonna try to go in today, and I did. And it was very short-lived. <laughs> I was there maybe three and a half, four hours today, this morning. It about killed me, and I'm not joking. And I don't know how or why. I think it was because I was in the office chair and I was swiveling to and fro. And I think that's what did it because I caught myself and told myself, I need to stop doing that because my obliques, which are the side muscles below your rib cage to your hip, and my gluteus, the muscles, were starting to tighten up and sting. And I'm like, oh, God, I, got, I can't do that. I've got to stop. And so I did, of course. But sitting there for that long in that type of chair, and I had a cushion in it also on the seat, but it hurt. And when I got up for a break, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm hurting really, really bad. And I'm just like, it was almost unbearable. And I was sitting there talking to a guy who was, he, he, well, I guess he was training me. My memory, if I don't do something for so long, I forget. Or if I don't do it often enough, I forget. So when I got there today, it was already planned that I was going to sit with him and he was going to kind of refresh my memory. And also a girl that had just left and went to a different company, she trained me wrong. So I have to retrain in those specific aspects of where I was not trained well. So I was hearing him talk today about it, about her saying that, yeah, she kind of messed up quite a bit. And I remember when she was kind of training me, there were several things that I didn't like. Well, I was uncomfortable with actually. And I'm not trying to talk bad about her because that's not who I am. I would ask him a question. He was at the time a team lead, but he was training me and he explained things better than she did. So I asked him a lot of questions. She would stop working and scooch over to where he and I were because I sat in the middle, he was to my left, she was to my right. So I would ask him questions and my back would be to her. She would stop working and scoot over to us and just barge right in to give me her answers. And that bothered me because the way she taught me, I could not comprehend. And it was like, let's just say this for an example. This did happen. But she would do things like, okay, click on blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I'm new to this job. I didn't even know where she's talking about. So I'm kind of going all over the place looking for what she meant. And it got where I was like, I don't even see it. Can you tell me where it's at? And then she would. And then there's this another one. This is a good example right here. There were two links that you had to click on. And and I can't tell you what they say because that would be a giveaway where I work. But one would say something and the other one would say something different. And I remember her saying, okay, click on this one. And there would be many more links above and below what I'm talking about. And she would say, well, click on the second one. And I said, oh, can you tell me why that I would need to click on the second one? Because I need to know the reason. Because if I didn't, if I got back in there, how would I know where to click except for that one? And sometimes that specific one is in, in there more than once. And I said, can you tell me why I would click on this? What would the reason be so I'd know? She goes, because it's always like that. Okay, that didn't really answer. So I just stopped asking her. And then I think I mentioned this in one of my videos that she didn't train well. So I didn't understand a lot of things and she'd get frustrated. Now, if I don't understand something or it just doesn't seem right, I can't do that. I have to know why. 
anyway, she had explained something to me again, and I'm getting frustrated because she doesn't train well. And I'm like, okay. And so she scooted over to her seat, and I looked over at that time at her, and she was had her back to me, but I could still see what she was doing, the side of her face and everything. And she was doing this to the team lead's brother, who was sitting on the other side of me. And she goes, like that because of me. And I turned back around and I'm like, really? So the next day I told the team lead and then he talked to the manager and she was pulled in. I don't know if she denied doing that and I don't really care. The whole topic on that was she left and come to find out she didn't do well. And I thought she was very intelligent. I thought she was a very intelligent person, but evidently she wasn't that intelligent. And I'm still not knocking her down or anything, but when somebody barges in and thinks that they know everything and they're training right and what she says or he says is correct and right, and then come to find out they're not, there's an issue. And the way I understood today also that there was many things that she didn't do right. Continuing on my topic of going in early today. So I started realizing that I was hurting really bad and this guy I was sitting with so he could refresh my memory. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm hurting so bad. And I said, I think I came back too early. And he's like, well, maybe you should go see if you could finish out your another two weeks. And I'm like, I wonder if I can. And he goes, well, you, you've got to take care of yourself. You come first. So I went over and talked to my manager who was team lead, but he's manager now. And he said, yeah, I'll call them and see if you could go ahead and continue your remaining two weeks. And I did. And they said, yes. So I went home. I mean, went home. <laughs> I was preparing to go home. I had to move desks again. By the time I got downstairs, walking to my Durango, when I was walking through security little opening ways, I don't know what you would call it. I started realizing, oh my God, this is getting worse. And so I had to take baby steps and I was kind of embarrassed because I was thinking if people are watching me right now and they don't, did not know that I've had a second hip surgery, they're going to think that there's something wrong. Um, but I really didn't care. I was just like, oh gosh, you know. So I walked through the little security things and as I went out the doors, it got like, bam, bad, bad. I know I had a backpack on with my laptop in it and stuff and then my purse and I know that doesn't help me and that could have made things difficult for me today when I went in because I didn't think about that. But I remember when I put the backpack on this morning, it was heavy. So I'm walking through the parking lot and it took me a long time to get to the Durango. I am walking slow and baby steps. And I mean, you know, when you're walking in your stride, is, your feet are really far apart, you know, where mine were like this. <laughs> I didn't care. I was taking my time. It was excruciating. And it took everything I had to get into the vehicle. As I stated, you know, I have to relax my right leg and grab it with my hand and help lift it in where it's less painful. Well, that hurt pretty bad. And then uh, yesterday while I was in, my storage, I don't remember if I said anything about it in my, my previous video. Another car yesterday had parked really close to me. And when I opened the door, I couldn't open it that wide. I should have parked in the handicap because in the handicap, you have more room. And I'm assuming it's for like a van access or wheelchairs. I, I'm not sure how that works. Um, and just so you know that I do have a handicap license plate, but I just feel like I don't need it in which I really do. I grabbed my leg and I tried to, you know, squeeze in and I overextended my left hip, the surgery I had before this one. And I felt it pull and it felt like it ripped. I don't think it ripped, but it pulled. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh my God, oh my God, that was excruciating. And I'm sitting there thinking, I hope I didn't make things worse. Oh my gosh. I was like internally praying that I didn't mess it up. And it's been since October, that surgery. I doubt I tore anything. I think I just overstretched it. 
So I drove onto my storage and when I got out of the Durango and started to walk, oh my gosh, I about came apart. It hurt so bad. I remember groaning and saying, oh my God, I really hurt it. I really hurt it. <laughs> Thank goodness nobody was around. But I had a really good limp going on. And then last night, it eased up quite a bit. But I still felt good. I felt like I could go to work today. But no, not, not for me. On the way home, I wanted to cry. And as I've mentioned before, I can't live like this. If this is my life from this point forward of being in pain this bad, I, I don't want it. I don't know what I, I can do to make that better. And I had tears off and on coming home. They weren't streaming or anything, but they sure watered up and I just kind of like stopped. But I, I can't. This life is going to be so difficult if I have to go forward with this type of pain for the rest of my life. I actually had to take a pain pill. I haven't took, I took the last of the really strong pain pill when I got in my truck. And I have the weaker uh, pain pills that I got from the doctor. And I've been trying to hang on to them because I know from my last hip surgery that there's going to be bad days. There's going to be good and there's going to be bad so I hurried up and got a refill on the second one because if you wait too long, they think, oh no, you should be better by now. You don't need them. And they will think that you're an, 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 an a addict and that's not who I am. But having 15 surgeries, I come to know that there are good and bad days. And so I get a second refill as soon as I can. And you have to be smart about it because you can't get a refill while you still have a full prescription. But I stretched it out long enough where it would have looked like I was almost out. And so I probably have 30 days of the lesser pain medication. Yeah, I hanged on to them because of that. This part might be boring to you. I don't know, but he popped in my head today. And that's my, I don't think he's a gray. But he looks like he's a gray. Extraterrestrial is what I mean. I'm sorry. He is my guide. For those who don't know, he's one of my guides. I seen him before a medium channeled a drawing that she did with, um, I'm going to guess they're watercolor pencils. She did it and she's she does the um, portals. She does the portals and they're circular. And there was three of them in this painting for me. I, I call it a painting, but it was watercolors, I'm sure. But I seen already three of my guides before she drew this. And when she showed it to me and channeled information to me from the painting drawing, um, she said, do you recognize any of them? And I said, yes, three of them. And she said, they said that you would know that and that you would say that. And Bob was one of them. I named him Bob. I don't know why I thought it fit him because he's so cute and lovable and happy. I don't know why Bob popped in my head and that might be his name. I, I don't know. I don't know if that was a nickname I gave him before I was reincarnated. I'm not sure. But for those of you who don't know, I was asleep that night and I woke up to a sound and air gust against me in the bed and then I was recovering from shoulder surgery I just came out of my sling and I had a pillow in front of me and I had my arm draped over it because it was still sore that arm felt that air and, and my face felt it too and it was cold and I jumped and I gasped and my daughter's dog's head raised up and he looked at me but when I was looking straight ahead there was a bob and he had been three and a half, four foot tall. And I looked at him and I was like, oh, I gasped. And he smiled and waved real quick. And then he popped out through the wall and I saw his little feet fling up in the air. When she did that drawing, I seen him and I'm like, oh my God, that E.T. is my guide. He's one of my guides. And that made me so happy. 
But me telling you that story is on the way home, I was sad and trying not to bawl. And I remember thinking of him. And I think maybe he was thinking of me because he popped in my head. I, it happened so quick, I don't remember seeing his eyes. And it actually looked like he had a helmet on. I'm not 100% sure because it happened so quickly. But I remember his smile. But in my thoughts today, I was thinking about his eyes and then it hit me. In the drawing, they were black, big and black. And I don't recall seeing the black. And I remember today on the way home thinking, oh my God, I wonder what color his eyes are. And then bam, I saw eyes, huge eyes that were like a greenish blue color because they're just like ours, but they're just huge. And for those who don't know, the black that's over their eyes, those are lenses. Our sun is too bright for them, so they have to wear those lenses. I think they're very sensitive to light. Our world is so bright with the sun, and I don't think that their planet is that bright. But me seeing his eyes today made me happy. And then I remember thinking, I need to start meditating. I've got to start meditating again. It's been a long time. And I mentioned in my last video, I can't sit Indian style, but you can sit in any position or even stand and meditate. But I feel like that I would be entranced too deep to, to stand. I would fall. But I'm like, I, I need to start meditating again and I need to start healing entities because of that. I did that before. And I, I thought, maybe if I start healing these entities, maybe they'll heal me. I gave them permission several times to the, the highest vibrating entities. I remember saying, I give you permission to heal me to the fullest extent that you're able to. And I thought today, maybe if I heal some entities, they'll heal me. And I don't know. I, I think when I think of that, I think of when they came to me for my Achilles before surgery, they worked on it and it didn't heal it, but I don't know exactly what they did. Part of me feels like that they can't totally heal people, but from what I understand, they can. So I don't know why I'm not blocking it. I'm not mentally saying, okay, you can't heal me. I want them to heal me. And I know they have that ability to also heal. I don't know what the block is of not going fully with it of the healing. I still don't know when I will be able to go back in my car and start living in it again. A part of me is happy about it because I was always alone. In the beginning, it kind of bothered me and I got anxiety about it and stuff, but I grew to like it. It was difficult to find things to do, of course, but I started reading again and I wanted to meditate in the, in the Durango. I bet I'd have to do it in the front seat, which is fine because sitting in the back, my head touches. And so I could not straighten my back up properly for my chakras to line up. Instead of when you slouch, your chakras is like, this is your butt. It'll be like this if you're slouching or bowed out, just however your back is. But when you're sitting straight, your chakras are aligned and that energy goes through the way it's supposed to. So that was my excuse for not doing it in the Durango. Um, but I need to start doing it again. My meditations started developing things for me. And that might be the wrong term. But I saw the light beings come to me when I was healing them. And it came to me one time that a voice that was not mine like it it kind of like barged in kind of because i was in a relaxed state of meditation and this voice said who was i before this lifetime and then an angel appeared and i could still see myself i was in silver and i think i talked about it before a silver armor with like it was gold or brass outlining it and uh, i had a sword 
And as I've said in my past videos, I always knew I was God's warrior. When I was a little girl, I used to say it all the time. I am God's warrior. I would fight for him. I would die for him. Talking about this again makes me happy. It stirs something familiar. And I like that feeling. Um, I've been able to feel Zeke more again lately. Zeke is my soulmate and he's my guardian. I was talking to him about him, not to him, but about him yesterday to Lanita and he popped in my head the visual of him and I'm, I'm sitting there telling her he is beautiful. Oh my gosh, he's so beautiful. You don't usually call a man beautiful, but this man is beautiful. He's so, so handsome and he's so domineering but loving and you can see all of that in him i can see him now just talking about it i love the ability that i have of seeing things like that when i talk about him when my visits have started back recently i tell them i'm not scared if you feel my energy shift it's anxiety as in i'm not sure what i'm going to see but i'm excited about it and i don't care if they're scary looking and it's like this positive adrenaline kind of thing and it's like oh yeah 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 kind of um but they never fully appear they used to i shouldn't say fully appear because when they did appear to me a lot of them were um i always forget that word like in star wars and the early movies some of you might not even know what i'm talking about they're like projected it's like a film like you have a camcorder and you're, you pull down that white screen and you, you project whatever's on that cam, uh, camcorder. Or in the movies, actually. The movies are better because the movie you can see the stream over your head and you can see it hitting the screen. It's something like that. I, I can't think of the word, but they're projected to me. When they worked on my Achilles, they were not projected. They were actually there and they were transparent but you could see them, especially when my TV lit up. You can see them. And I remember in my head thinking, oh my God, I see them, oh my God. And I was so excited. I think it was Oren, my Arcturan. Um, he's been with me since the beginning. Um, he turned and looked at me. He must've heard my thoughts. He turned and looked at me and then he turned back and was watching TV. And I'm sitting there thinking, is he watching TV? He had lenses on that reflected with the, the TV light. I was sitting there thinking, why does he have glasses on? But when I start thinking about it, it was night. Maybe certain lights hurt his eyes. I don't know. I love reminiscing on the, the beings that have came to me. I just really wish that at this point in my life that they would come more and reveal themselves more i don't know if that will ever happen or not but i really hope it does because that's my family i never thought in a million years that i would call extraterrestrials my family <laughs> but to be honest with you they are a better family for me than what i actually have and i mean that in so many ways my whole entire family has treated me like shit. And that is even an understatement. They treat me worse than that. And to have somebody that loves me more and I can feel that love, it just makes me happy. And I'm sitting there thinking, that's my, that's my family. They love me and I can feel it. And I have no doubt whatsoever that they love me. That's so strange. I'm sitting there thinking about it and it's so strange to sit and think about that. Extraterrestrials, are my family. I'm so lucky. That sounds so weird. I'm so lucky. It's, it's strange to say that we don't feel love here. You know that, like for instance, your husband or wife tells you that they love you, but you understand that because it's words and you know that when they say it, they mean it. Not all the time though. But when an extraterrestrial loves you, you actually feel it. You feel it through your whole body. It's like uplifting and it's so overwhelming that sometimes you just want to cry with happiness. And it's a, this is the wrong word to use, but it's like a disturbance in your soul 
as in saying, I love you through and through, and you're going to feel it in every single way possible. And it's hard to describe because in my life, it was hard to tell who loved me. And I never felt it. Not even with my many husbands. <laughs> that sounds so bad. It's different here on earth. You don't feel a lot of things. Yeah, when you cross over, it's, it's going to be a little difficult in the way of feeling those emotions because with my NDA, yeah. NDE, sorry, I always want to say NDA, but I felt it then. I was a soul. I was in any, any human body. I was a soul. And for me to feel it there and remember it now, it's the same way. You feel it on the other side. It's the best feeling ever. And, but you, I have said before, you have to adjust because it's overwhelming in the beginning because we're not used to that feeling of being loved. So I, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I have been emotional since leaving work and I know, I knew both uh, that I had to do a video today because it's been a few days. Well, at this time it's a few days. I'm fixing to go upload another video before this one. So it's probably not going to be a few days when you see this one. But I knew I had to do a video and uh, get it out after the next one. And I'm tired of putting huge gaps between my videos. I need to be better at it and work my butt off. But sometimes, especially when you're trying to heal from a lot of pain, it's very difficult. And when you don't get out and do anything and be more showing you more other than just talking to you, I know that's got to be difficult too. It, it's probably even boring. I'm not sure. Um, but I hope to be able to get back in my Durango, um, live in it and again, live in it again, show you more things. I just feel like I'm so boring right now and I'm so sorry. I love you guys tremendously. I really, really do. And I'm, I'm lucky that you come and watch my videos. And I'm lucky that a lot of you has hung in there from the beginning and are still watching my videos. I noticed that in my comments. I want to tell you how much I value you and you mean the world to me. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a YouTuber. I really do. I care for everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a bad person. I still care for everybody. You just kind of learn how to have boundaries for people who are not that good of a person. Um, as Jesus had said, you know, love thy enemy. And it's very odd because I do. And I feel you have to love everything. Um, even earth. Earth is a living thing. I don't know how to describe it, but it, it she's alive. But yeah, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you're well, and I truly love you. And I'm going to send each and every one of you love, light, and peace. Bye.